Hey, hey, it's Danielle Mercurio here with your City Astrology November 2014 report. I'm so excited to give you my cosmic mashup of what's going on in astrology, the planetary trends, what I've seen in tarot readings I've done, my own intuitive guidance, and today we're even going to throw in an angel card message for you. So, got a nice little forecast for the month ahead. And why I love doing this is because I know that you have intentions, I know that you have goals, I know that you're curious about how things are going to pan out. And so this can give you that extra lift, that awareness that you need so that you can implement and move forward in a way that's really going to support you. So that's why I love doing these episodes and I invite you to, to sit back, watch, take in what you feel like you want to receive. If something goes over your head, just let it go over your head. Somebody else will catch it, okay? So October, let's just, let's just say for a moment, it's gone, we can breathe. This, this month feels a lot lighter already, doesn't it? And, and let me just say too, you guys were rock stars. Like, man, you stepped up. You may not feel like it, but I really, I really felt that you did take my challenge, that you did rise up above the Mercury retrograde, the eclipses, all that planetary tension that was going on. You were amazing. So even if you don't think you were, I'm here to tell you, you were amazing. The universe saw it and you should feel like really like impressed with yourself right now because you did it. And that's why November is going to be that much better because you really, um, when you can face all the stuff that came your way with this upcoming month, that's so much lighter, you're going to have a lot more confidence. And the things that would typically bother you actually are like no sweat now, right? You're like, I got this. And this month ahead is really going to then increase your power to manifest, and not only to manifest, but actually make your manifestations happen. What we've been doing the past couple months is we've been kind of throwing everything we want into a bag. So career, money, love, whatever our intentions are, we've kind of been throwing them out there for the universe. And what's been happening is it's kind of like a wind-up toy. Everything's just kind of been cranking back and winding up and winding and winding and winding and winding. And now this month, it's time to set the toy free. Time to let it go off with everything that you put into it, all of your intentions, your love, your stress, whatever it may be, and to go off and see what happens. But the thing is, when the toy goes off, you may have an idea of what path it's going to take, but the universe may intervene, free will may intervene, who knows what could happen. So the toy could go in any direction, but your role is to just sit and let it happen and trust that will all work out in your favor. A lot of things happen behind the scenes and sometimes that can bother us because we don't know what's going on. But really, you can just kind of sit and just like be like, all right, show me what you got. I've, I've put everything I can into it. Now it's time to see what I get back, okay? So that's a lot of November. And we're gonna stay in the sun sign of Scorpio until November 22nd. So with that, there's that heightened sense of intuition, really tapping in more into your spirituality. There's still a big emphasis on relationships. I mentioned that at the end of October, that new love may come into your life. I also mentioned that it's time to reassess the relationships that you may be in now. Really, um, the stress is even more on the romantic side right now. So I really want you to look at the relationships you're in. If you're with a dude or a dudette and it's going great, amazing. You have this beautiful divine blessing. Keep going with it. Keep exploring. Keep having fun. Keep sharing in the love. If you're having a lot of setbacks, a lot of issues, a lot of tension, a lot of butting heads, I really want you to think about, is this relationship worth it? Is this relationship serving me? Is the relationship serving the other person? If it's not... Do we want to take the time to rectify this, to make it work? Or do we want to just simply let it go? It's time to make that decision. And if you're single, and you're single and, and it feels right to you, then that's fine. Keep rocking it out, girl or dude. But if you're single and it's not how you want it to be, it's time to think about why that is. Is it because you're just kind of putting your hands up and saying it's too hard and making excuses? Are you not feeling confident yourself? This is a time to really work on your own inner strengths, your own inner guidance, and start to just put yourself out there and see what can happen. You never really know until you try. It's so easy to make excuses. It's so easy to think that you know best. But without really putting yourself out there, who are you to know and who are you to say? So I really encourage you to explore what's going on inside that's preventing you from getting what you want in love outside. And of course, we all know if you are feeling your most true, confident self, you're going to attract that, that authenticity, you know what I mean, back, right? 
So as we move through November, um, we have Scorpio Sun until November 22nd, and we move into Sagittarius. And the Sagittarius is all about, again, that idea of what perspective do we want to take when something's not working for us? Sags are so great at being like, all right, let's see another way. Let's go this way. Let's try that way. And so I encourage you to try that too. When you don't like what you see, to kind of shift your perspective and kind of see what else is out there and what other way could work and maybe follow the advice of yourself as opposed to always trying to follow the advice of everybody else. Um, and you can kind of have a little bit more of a free-spirited approach um, and kind of adapt a happy-go-lucky attitude. Um, and with that, again, it's going to really be just kind of a dreamy month, um, a really nice space to be in for love and, and what it is that you want. But of course, there's still going to be some cracking down, working hard. We have the full moon in Taurus on November 6th. Now, the full moon is all about taking action, implementation, what it is that you want. And Taurus is all about values and all about really getting to the core of what matters most to you. So again, in this whole thing that I'm talking about with the relationships and what it is that you want, I want you to get really clear on what's most important to you. Are you getting back what you receive? And I want you to look at that in other areas of your life too. Your career, your job, the money that you make, is it in alignment to what you feel like you're putting out there? Or are you spending too much time, let's say you have your own business, and you're giving away too much of your time for free. How is that serving your worth and serving your value? Friends, are you giving too much of your time out to friends that want you know, your advice, and then you find that you're not getting any you know, thing back in return? All this different stuff. Your own self-care. Are you giving yourself the time that you need, or are you just writing it off? So really think about what it is that you value most in this world and how is it aligned with your purpose? How is it aligned with how you want to feel love? Just, you know, really think about that. So on the full moon of Taurus, November 6th, make a list. Make a list of everything that you feel is really important. And then I want you to look and see how balanced it is. And if it's balanced, amazing. Just ask that it keep going forward and keep that momentum going. And if you find that it's under or over balanced, then kind of start to brainstorm how it can be and how you can shift your perspective. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is, um, again, back to the new moon in Sagittarius. So the new moon in Sagittarius is November 22nd, same time that the sun enters in. And the new moon is all about what do you want to bring into your life. And this is going to be a time for, about to think about your freedom. And, you know, it, it's really going to be a time to think about where can you create more space? And you're going to find that that's going to come from what you're doing earlier in the month with the whole assessment and seeing what is important to you and what's not important to you. And you're going to find that as you create more balance in your life, you create the space to have a little bit more room, to have a little bit more freedom to do what it is that you want to do. We so often forget that we are put here to be happy. We are put here to be in a space of love. We are put here to be abundant to be prosperous. And for some reason, our perspectives have shifted into thinking that we have to have this no pain, no gain you know, concept, or that we have to prove our worth, that we have to let everyone know what we're made of. And that's not serving us in an equal way. And it's not making us feel like we're really authentic. It's making us feel that we're always outside of ourselves. So really just, I want you to Assess what matters most. Assess how you can create that balance. And from there, seek freedom. This is like your Independence Day. November 22nd, redefining Independence Day for you and how you can bring more of what you want into the world. And just let loose a little bit, relax a little bit. It's almost like, um, the best way to say it is a, is a relaxed direction. So you know where you're going. You, you know. You know deep down what you need to do. And now is the time to do it and not overstress about it, not overthink about it, and just let your soul direct you, let your heart direct you, because that's where all your truth is. That's where all your, your real stuff, your goodness is. Okay, so what we're going to do next is, because I've been saying so much about relationships and love for this month with the Scorpio and the Sagittarius, I mean, Venus is really powerful and heightened this month, so it's really about love. Whether you're single or in a relationship, we're going to refer to Dream Virtues, Romance Angel Deck, to really cool, uh, saucy one, I think. It's got kind of a, um, what's his name, that Fabio guy? Harlequin romance cover feel. All right, I'm going on too much about this. So anyway, we're going to use this deck. And 
I'm going to shuffle the cards now, and as I do, I want you to think of a question that has to do with your romantic life, it has to do with the partner that you're with now, whether it is that you guys have a great relationship and you're just curious of what's to come, or maybe there's a question or some kind of communication issue that you're having, or maybe you're on the fence about your relationship and you're not sure if it's worth saving or, or if it's time to let it go. Or if you're single and you're wondering if you know you need to be single a little bit longer, or maybe there's a block that's stopping you from really getting into a relationship. Maybe you're jumping around from partner to partner, or maybe partner to partner is jumping around with you. Um, it's time to kind of just get really clear on that. Really think about what is it you want for love. And as you think about your question, I'm going to call upon the angels, the archangels, God, Mary, anyone that can provide divine guidance in these cards to reveal to you what is that you need to know about your love life right now, about romance. And I'm going to think of one too. And we ask that all ego goes to the side, all judgment, and just the pure divine guidance is received. Okay. Oh, so we got the wedding card. <laughs> All right, so this situation involves marriage. All right, guys, so cue up the uh, the proposals because there's going to be some weddings in our future. Now, what this means, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be getting married tomorrow. It doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, the person you're with is going to be your husband. But what it means is, is that you really do want to have an emphasis on union right now, on partnerships. Is this person that I'm with... Right now, maybe we just started dating, but does he have that potential? Does he have the potential to be a husband to me? Does he have the qualities that I'm looking for in a husband? You know, when you think about long term, you want someone that maybe is a good communicator, that is respectful, that likes a challenge, that's up for an adventure. Maybe those are the qualities you're looking for. Um, maybe it's a time to reassess your marriage and be like, is this really working? Or is it not? So the emphasis is really on marriage and long-term union. So if you're starting out with someone and you're brand new, think about does this person have long-term potential? If you've been with someone for a while and you are married, maybe it means it's time to reassess. Maybe it means it's time to think back about why you married that person and, and all of the good stuff that, that came from it. Use your own intuition right now. Use your own guidance of what you see when you look at this card. What rings true to you? What it brings in your mind? And we can look at the guidebook too. Because why not? Um, and see what they have to say about this awesome wedding card. So, oh, and it could mean too that you may be going to a wedding soon. Maybe you're stressed out about a wedding and that's distracting you from your own relationships and, and moving ahead with where you are. Maybe it means you're going to meet somebody at a wedding. That could be it as well. Um, it could be validation that you're getting married. Um, and it asks you to keep the faith and continue to enjoy your life without worrying about your future marital status. For others, this could signal that you'll meet a significant other at a wedding or experience that um, there will be a new romance for you. It can also represent your parents' marriage and the way it affected your feelings and beliefs about their relationship. And in some cases, it may ask you to look at your present and past marriages and review your feelings with the intention of healing your heart of your relationship. Perhaps it's time to enlist in a marital counselor to help you sort out how you feel. And sometimes this card can signal the end of a marriage, in which case the angels support everyone involved as you come to an understanding about the experience and renew your heart's willingness to love. So perhaps if this does mean the end of a relationship, know that it's not the end forever. Know that new love will be in sight. Whether it's with yourself for a while or you find him or her again right away, it will come. So don't worry. I think that's the biggest thing that you can get out of this message is to not worry. What is meant to be yours will be yours. You just have to trust. It's like that wind-up toy. You put all of your faith in it. You put all of your affirmations. You put all of your hard work. But then it comes to a point where you simply just have to let go and trust that it will go in the direction that will serve you best. That it will find the path that is right for you. And that's how it always is. How many times in your life have you looked back and said, yes, it did work out for the best. And we did a lot of unnecessary worrying. 
So this isn't the time to worry. This is the time to trust, do the best that you can, and be really honest. And be in a space that you can find things that work well for you, and also respect and honor the other person involved as well, no matter what the situation is. All right. Thank you, Romance Angels. <laughs> so November, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more of a relaxed month for us, um, really just kind of focusing on what it is that, that serves us best, what's important to us, and shifting our perspective into being a little bit selfish. And I always say that self-care is aligned with our selfishness, so it's not a bad thing. You know, it's okay to take care of ourselves because that's how we can continue forward. That's how we can move ahead. That's how we can get rid of some of this unstuckness or the stuckness that we're feeling so that we can feel unstuck. And really just get yourself in a space to align with freedom. November 22nd, Independence Day, New Moon of Sagittarius, that's what I'm calling it. So where do you want to repoint your life? Where do you want to open up the space? Where do you want to take a more free-spirited approach so that you can really just start grooving in the life that you want and stop worrying so much about the life you want and just freaking be in it and just enjoy it, right? So thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to hear how your month is going or what you have projected for it and how this insight has kind of fallen into place with it. I love your comments. I love your feedback and I love you watching. I absolutely adore you. And so have an amazing November. I'm so excited for you and I can't wait to talk again in December.